Right, I want the uh, I want to factorize for question one and two, and I need to find the highest common factor of twelve x and sixty six. Um, and you may be able to spot it straight away, or you might not. I might try six, and then I'll see if I can do it. Do another one, but I think it might will be six. Um, and then I've got two times by x because that's going to give me twelve x six times two x, and I'll have eleven here. And that's as much as I can factorize it. This one, I can see that 5 is going to work, and then i got 11x uh, plus, and this would be 13. Next question. b squared times by b would give me b cubed, because b on its own is the same as b to the power 1. And then I've got the a's. a squared times a is going to give me a cubed, and I'm just going to write that as b cubed a cubed or a cubed b cubed. You can write it either way around, but it's conventional, as in it's the normal way mathematicians do it, to start with the letter which is nearest to the beginning of the alphabet. Right, b4, b4, and then I've got times by b4, and I've got a to the power 1, and I've got b to the power 1. So I've got a to the power 1 times by b to the power 4 times b to the power 4 is b to the power of 8. Just to explain why that is the case, and not b to the 16, um, if I have b to the power of 4, that's just b times b times b times b, and if I multiply that by b to the power of 4, it's just b times b times b times b, so that gives me 8, b times by itself 8 times. But then I've got one more b here, so I'm going to have b to the power of 9. So that gives me a, b to the power 9. Next question, 43.5. Uh, if you want to use a column method, oh, I've written 34. If you want to use a column method, then that's fine. You'd have to add in a 0 there, wouldn't you? And I'm going to take away 0 0.91. If you don't want to use a column method, that's fine. Uh, but I have to do, what am I doing here? Don't need that to do that, do I? Oh, 43.50, take away 0 0.91. It's going to give me 42.59, 42.59. Okay, 29 times by 8.6. I would do 29 times by 86, and then divide my answer by 10. So 29 times 86 would be... B, whatever method, I would like to see a method here, guys. I'm just going to use a calculator to keep it quick, but I would like to see a method here that you will be using. 29 times by 86 is 2,494, but that's too high because that's 10 times too big because I've multiplied that by 10, so this answer would have to be divided by 10, so this gives me 249.6. Point four. Point four. Thank you. Point four. Rushing. Right. Lowest common, uh, lowest common multiple as denominator would be six. So I've got two six plus three six, which is five six. Lowest common multiple as a denominator would be four. So I've got three quarters take away two quarters, which is just one quarter. If you did that with eight. That's fine, but you need to simplify it after. You, the lowest common multiple of 4 and 2 is 4, so I would be better to use that. Next one. Nth term. What's it going up in? It's going up 12. It's going up 12. It's going up 12. So the nth term is 12n. n is the term number, so when n is 1, 12 times by 1 is 12. I need to adjust it by taking away 3. This one, it's go again, it's going, we've got up 12 again, haven't we? Up 12, up 12, up 12. So again, we've got 12n, but we have to take away more. When n is 1, we are on 12, and I've got to get to 7, I've got to take away 5. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 3.9 divided by 0 0.3. Use equivalent fractions. 
is the same thing as 39 divided by 3. If you've done a different method, this is the most efficient method. Okay, 39 divided by 3 is just 13. Use equivalent, use equivalent fractions to work that sort of thing out. Okay, next one. 5x minus 3 equals minus 3. I'm going to have to add 3 to both sides. 5x equals 0. So x is going to equal 0. Unknowns both sides. Let's get all the x's on one side. So at the moment, I've got 4x on that side and 8x on this side. If I take away 4x from both sides, that's not a like term with the 5 and 11, so I'm only dealing with the x's. So that will then give me 4x plus 5 here equals minus 11. Now you have to be careful with your negatives. I'm going to take away 5 from both sides. Take away 5, take away 5. 4x equals minus 16. Be careful with your negatives. 5 lower than minus 11, minus 16. And then, so I'm just going to rewrite that out here. 4x equals minus 16. Divide by 4 on both sides gives me x equals minus 4. Question 15. Divide 88 in the ratio 1 to 7. So I've got 8 parts in total. I've got 88, and if I divide it by 8, I'll get 11 pounds per part. So we've got 1 times 11, which is 11, and we've got 7 times 11, which is 77. So 16 parts in total on this one, and I've got 176. So if I do 176 divided by 16, goes in once, one's left over, goes in once, 11 pounds per part. Again, with 11 pounds per part. So we've got 55 pounds, which is 5 times by 11, and we've got 121 pounds, which is 11 times 11. Next question. Express 19% as a fraction in its lowest terms. 19 out of 100, is that in its lowest terms? Yes, it is. No way of simplifying that. Express 1 fifth as a percentage. 1 fifth is the same as 2 tenths, is the same as 20 hundredths. That is what a percentage is, 20%. Find the gradient of the line. I'm not sure you've done much of this, but basically I need to use this thing y equals mx plus c, where the number, the coefficient of x is the gradient, so whatever's multiplying x is the gradient, and you have to include that sign, so it's minus 4. And again, the number before the x, the coefficient of x here is 3, so my gradient is just 3.